So such a good um, morning. Oh my gosh, we are very energized and it's exciting to see all of the the mixing and mingling across sectors that's been happening here in the room. Welcome back to our folks online. Um, we are really excited that you're also participating. Um, I've been seeing the questions that are coming in online and there's some really important questions about how to really actualize more of this for teachers in the classroom and for families in their homes. So we wanna make sure by, especially by the end of the day, we'll have more opportunities to get some of those fantastic online questions answered and to make connections for folks. Um, the online bulletin board is still another good place to do that if you can. So. Um, feel free to use the, the, um, the QR code that's up here to do that, um, to connect. And you'll see on the event agenda as well, we have hyperlinked the names of everybody who's speaking. Um, so we're, we're gonna not spend too much time on intros because you'll be able to gonna go deeper on your own as you'd like, because we have a lot to get to today. Um, so I'm very excited to bring you all back into the room. And I have a couple, I have my laptop up here because I have a couple of new announcements I just, I wanna make before we jump into our incredible um, keynote conversation. Um, so the first is about the mixing and mingling you did. Um, we wanna tally how many cool connections you've made today. So Elise Franchino, who you'll meet in just a moment, has put um, a paper up on our board up. Actually, it's up on our glass wall here. And in the next three hours or so, if you can take a marker and just tally up, like, oh, I made a connection with someone in entertainment. I made a connection with somebody in the research sciences. Um, that would be fabulous. The next thing, um, and I wanted to um, take a minute to, this, is, this was not on the agenda, but we're so excited about it that I want to take a minute to make um, this announcement. Um, we are excited to share that one member of our Learning Sciences Exchange family, and I'm hoping that she's here, um, has received an incredible award that was just announced yesterday. Um, so the, our advisory board member, Jessica Sager, Jessica, who is the CEO and founder of All Our Kin, has won one of this year's Heinz Awards. So Jessica. Um, so for those of you who may not know, these are incredibly prestigious awards. They come with unrestricted funds of $250,000. There's a lot that organizations can do um, with that kind of um, investment. And they're, they're there are about nine awards, I think, that are made um, each year in different categories. One of the categories is the economy. And for those of you who may not know about Jessica's work with All Our Kin, which is celebrating its 25th anniversary, is that right? Yes. Um, All Our Kin is, a, is this incredible like social impact organization that um, provides training and support for family child care providers and has really shined a spotlight on the incredible work that those incredible people do with kids every day. So Jessica, thank you and congratulations. Yeah. Okay, so next, before we um, introduce our incredible keynote guests, I have to say that it's not only, it's not only humans who might have trouble sometimes with cross-sector collaboration. Um, we can also, we'll get to them in a minute, have some trouble if we're not human, but we happen to have fur and happen to live on Sesame Street. So I am thrilled to showcase a moment of learning and understanding from some of our favorite beloved Muppets, and we'll play the video now. Four. Wait, 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 where was I? Where was I? The volume, please. One. Well, you see, when I exercise, I go like this. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, but then when you play the drums... Oh, Elmo goes like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that? And it's really loud and fast, and, well, I lose my counting and I get all confused. Oh, oh well, sorry, Abby, but Elmo really, really needs to practice on Elmo's drums to get better and better. Yeah, but Elmo, I really, really need to do my fairy exercises to get stronger and stronger. Oh, so what should Abby and Elmo do? Hmm. Oh, well, you could stop playing the drum. <laughs> or Abby could stop doing her exercises. Hmm. But I don't want to stop. Oh, boy, Elmo doesn't either. Oh, dear. This is a big problem. Yeah, Elmo and Abby can't both do what we want to do at the same time. <gasps> Wait a minute. Huh? Well, maybe we can. Well, how? We can cooperate. Huh? Okay, can you play your drum like this? One, two, three, four. Elmo will try. Two, three, four. Yeah, that's yeah, it. that's it. Okay, and I'll keep exercising. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Come on, everybody, <laughs> clap. One, two, three, four. It's working. Yeah. Oh, collaboration is fun. <laughs> so, yeah, big, big thank you to Sesame Workshop for lending us that and, for, and to Rosemary for doing the work, going back through the archives to find the perfect clip. So... Um, so I now just want to um, introduce and bring onto stage um, the um, amazing uh, two people who are going to be in conversation with each other. Annie Murphy Paul is with us. She is a senior writer for a Hidden Brain podcast, the author of The Extended Mind, and is an LSX fellow from a couple of a cohort ago. So thank you, Annie. And she is going to be questioning Rosemary Trulio, who um, many of you in this room and online know, and I've seen Rosemary's work over many, many years. We have one of her books out on the table, G is for Growing. Um, and Rosemary is the Senior Vice President for Content and Curriculum Development at Sesame Workshop. So I'm gonna let you two take it from here, but thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Lisa. So I think they say you're never supposed to follow a child or an animal on stage, right? So <laughs> we're following Elmo. I don't know. He's a, kind of a little bit of both, or he's a monster, I guess. <laughs> but Rosemary and I <laughs> will do our best. So I'm Annie Murphy-Paul. As Lisa said, I'm a um, former LSX fellow. I um, am senior writer at Hidden Brain, the NPR uh, radio program and podcast. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm um, the author of a book called The Extended Mind. Um, and I'm here talking with Rosemary. Rosemary, would you just introduce yourself? So, yes, I'm Rosemary Trulio, the Senior Vice President for Curriculum and Content at Sesame Workshop. Been there for 27 years, so it's been a long time. Um, and I'm happy to be here. Yes, me too. So we're here to talk about seeing and solving problems through multiple lenses. And Sesame Workshop was a trailblazer in that regard. So I wonder, Rosemary, if you could tell us a little bit about the model that you all use uh, when you're integrating the science of learning and children's entertainment, how that model works. Uh, well, I want to acknowledge Joan Gans Cooney, our co-founder of uh, Sesame Workshop. Hearing everyone today, I just, <clears throat> just realized, wow, what a pioneer she really was. You know, we're talking about you know, collaboration and cross-discipline teams. And Roberta, you mentioned the word marriage. And um, Joan was the first person who was intentional about creating educational television and had a question. And it was an experiment. Can television actually teach children the way the little jingles and commercials teach children to, you know, sing a song or have that take-home message? But can we actually intentionally create with the right teams, the right cross-discipline teams, um, to make it a, a difference in the lives of children to get them better prepared for, for school? And so Joan knew back then. So we're going, we're, we're in the production of season 55. So I'm going to go back like 57 years ago. Knew back then the power and the importance of the learning sciences. So that's how she put this model together and said, okay, if we're actually gonna do this experiment, we have to have a model to be intentional. 
And she said, we gotta learn from the learning scientists. Those are the people who actually study how children learn, the developmental psychologists. And so she brought teams of developmental psychologists. And she quickly learned that developmental psychologists, gets back to what Kathy said earlier, they don't talk to um, early childhood educators. They don't know curriculum. You know, I remember when I was an undergraduate studying psychology, the only way I could see a child was to go on the education side, right? Because the psychologists weren't giving me an opportunity to spend time with children. Well, if those two disciplines don't talk to each other, well, what about the creatives? All right, and you bring in Jim Henson, the magic of, of what Jim and his team did, and the songwriters, and the producers, and the directors, and the animators, um, and all the creators in the room. You know that you, know, you put your heart and soul into these creations, and it's hard to take feedback, right? Especially from, from the educators or the, or the psychologists. So Joan created this model. It's called the Sesame Workshop model, and she referred to it as a marriage. And she said, as with all marriages, you have to listen, you have to trust, you have to respect, and you have to collaborate. You have to la collaborate for that common, common goal. And it's this model, um, which I'm gonna get into in a little bit, but that's the, that's the, the nucleus of the model, is the people, the people uh, part of the, of the model, um, is what drives our intentional educational media to, to this day, so 57 years later. It starts with the need, right? So Sesame was a whole child curriculum. Uh, it has evolved. It's a whole child curriculum that's dynamic. It, um, it used to be called, we finally stopped, I think it's season 45. We used to say it's the 50th experimental or the 45th experimental season. And everyone says, why are we saying experiment? Like, don't you guys have this down by now? So we stopped saying that. I think it was around season 45. But it's a dynamic curriculum because it's always evolving, because we're always learning from the learning scientist. And we're always learning as the various needs come up, be it an educational need, an academic skills need, be it a societal need, be it a health need. So we're always constantly evolving. So it starts with the need, and then I hold a annual curriculum seminar once that need is uh, identified, and I bring in the experts. I bring in those who have the data on how to address this need for young children. Um, and I bring in the educators, and I bring all of those who have the, the hands-on experience around that need in servicing young children. After the curriculum seminar, the, the curriculum gets um, modified again, and then we have this wonderful opportunity to work hand-in-hand -hand with the production team, the writers and the producers and the directors. And as you all know on your teams, uh, that's when the real magic happens, but that's where there's a lot of confrontation. It's not always easy. Um, and sometimes it gets pretty yucky, to, to be honest, and messy. But as we say with children, children learn best through mess, right? We want children to get messy. They learn through their mistakes. And as long as that, and someone mentioned it uh, earlier, as long as you have that trust, and that respect, and that understanding, and that common goal, magic comes out of that messiness. Um, but it doesn't stop there. So then you get a script. OK, we've got a script. <laughs> and I'm going to go back to Joan again. Joan will s always said, yeah, you all have your expertise, but the real experts are the children themselves. So go and test it. And so the next part of the model is what we call formative research. And once again, Sesame, they we're pioneers in the, in the area of, of formative research. Um, and that's when we really learn. And I think that's what keeps me motivated in my job because I love when the children prove me wrong. You know, I'm like, oh yeah, I know this. I know what, what, you know, what the outcome's gonna be. It's like, ooh, I learned something today. And so it gets revised. And then, um, then we go into uh, production Something else I learned early on in my career, um, we have monitors. We don't have monitors on our desks anymore, but we used to have monitors on our desks. And so um, the educators weren't allowed on set. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but we can monitor from our, our desks, and we all took turns mon monitoring. Those of you from Sesame remember those little monitors? And then you would call into the uh, studio. What I learned, however, is that they would be delayed in picking up my phone call. <laughs> and then they would say, oh, it was a buy. It was a buy. Oh, you, can't, you can't redo it. That's very expensive, those of us in production. You can't, you can't redo it. So then I got a seat into the control room because <laughs> I was like, I'm not playing this game anymore. Because a lot happens. You, you think the script is locked, but a lot happens on, on set. And then it goes out to the world. And then we do what we call a summative evaluation. And that's when we want to see, we, we identified a need. Now, did the content that we created, did it actually make a difference? Did we, did we move the needle? And, um, and we, we, the summative evaluations are done by outside uh, evaluators. And so, um, and we share our lessons. Sometimes we're off and sometimes we're, we're right on. Thank you, Rosemary. I love that map that you just laid out of how a program gets put together. I wonder if we could return to the early stages when you're putting together your ideas of what a program might be and just home in on some of that tension or friction or confrontation that you mentioned um, among people from different sectors um, who might see things differently or use different language or have different orientations. Can you think of a particular time when there was that kind of confrontation or that kind of tension and what that was about and how you how it got resolved? I have so many. <laughs> you don't have to use names. Right, right. No names. Um, no, I'm going to um, Kathy, you'll, you'll recognize um, this one. Um, when we, because one of your groups is about joy. And um, I've, I've had the great pleasure of working with Kathy and Roberta. And we did a lot of work with the Lego Foundation and, and coming up with learning through play. And I realized that on Sesame, we don't play a lot. And it was an eye opener. For me. So I brought that back, and they're like, oh no, we don't play, we tell stories. I was like, but wait a minute, we are, we're telling stories for preschoolers, and many of our characters are, are preschoolers, and why aren't we playing more? So I introduced this concept of, of, of learning through play, and it evolved, and it evolved from learning through play to really getting at that sense of wonder and curiosity, because that's another lesson that I learned, that that was missing, and that came up in the groups today. So wonder, curiosity, that whole idea of critical thinking, um, and perseverance. So I got into arguments not only with um, the production team, the, the creators, but I also got into an argument with the researchers. At the time, I wore both hats. Um, I, w I was both a researcher and the ed educator, and then we split, and, and, and that was great. I kind of liked that, that split. I like that separation. But um, I came up with, um, I wanted a three-legged stool. I wanted to focus on wonder. I wanted to focus on creativity, cr uh, critical thinking. And I wanted to focus on perseverance. And, and at the time, Brown Johnson was with us. And she brought us all together um, for content meetings. It used to be, and that used to be really contentious, it used to be me with the head writer. And we would go line by line in script review. And it, it, it wasn't easy. It really wasn't easy. <laughs> and, um, and then he would say, all right, well, we're at an impasse, so go test it. Everything was go test it. OK, fine. You can't test everything, but all right, fine. Um, and we often did have to test it. Um, but Brown said, and then, and then we have to go to the executive producer to, to resolve the, the conflict. And that wasn't fun either. Mm -hmm. I'm the educator. And I was like, oh, you're taking the fun out of everything, Rosemary. <laughs> Don't you know it's about giggles and laughs? It's like, yeah, I like giggles and laughs in service of learning. Mm -hmm. There's not an either or. Mm -hmm. OK, so Brown said, None, no more of this. We're going to all sit around the table. And we're going to go through script review. And everyone's going to have their voice. 
And I was like, oh, this is not going to work out. But you know what? That was the best idea. So we're all sitting around the table. And who would think that I would have an argument with the research team? The research team, Kathy, you're, this is, you were spot on earlier. We can't assess three things at the same time. We don't have measures for all three things. You're asking for the impossible. Um, we're just going to focus on perseverance. And I said, no, I'm not going to settle for that. Well, we can't do it. Then pick one. So I said, no, I want all three. So Brown, a creator, said, you know what? We could do this. And that's how we came up with, and she said, we're going to come up with a chant. I wonder, whenever there's a problem, I wonder, what if, let's try. All right, now we have the writers. The writers are like, that's not how we write Sesame Street. <laughs> Sesame Street does not follow a formula. I'm not saying follow a formula. I'm saying for this curriculum focus, I want a chant. I, you'll get it once. <laughs> Brown then said, we need the rule of three. We need it three times. And so um, it was Brown who brokered that deal. And then the writers said, um, well, don't call this... Um, uh, a story for formula. So words matter when you're arguing. Words have a lot of meaning. So we came up with a term that made them happy. For the curriculum focus, we are going to have a narrative structure. <laughs> the narrative structure is going to be in support of this curriculum focus, and this is how we're going to do it. And if you want to learn more about it, we have a special issue in the Journal of Children and Media, and um, Kathy and others are our contributors, and it maps out the whole, the whole journey. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary, for that peek behind the curtain of what really happens at Sesame Workshop. Um, I love the idea that you mentioned earlier about how children are the ultimate experts. And I wonder if you could think about and tell us about a time when the kids that you showed a program to reacted very differently from what you expected or what you wanted. Um, what happened and what did you do about it? Um, well, I'm lucky to work for a company that will scratch the script and, and start again. Um, because we do take the voices of, of kids very, very seriously. Um, because we know that at the end of the road, there is a summative evaluation. So a good example um, is when we focused on a kindness curriculum. Believe it or not, says we didn't have a kindness curriculum. Um, it's a pro-social show, but we didn't have a kindness curriculum. So when we redid our mission statement, it was uh, help kids grow smarter, stronger, and kinder. Smarter are those academic skills, but also how we learn those process skills. Um, stronger is your physical health, but also your mental health. And so we have an emotional well-being um, initiative. And kinder is about having mutual respect and learning. Um, about each other. So that brings us back to that diversity. That, I mean, what was really wonderful listening to you today about joy and um, diversity and, um, and, and belonging, huge. Um, that was our seasons uh, 53 and 54. Um, when we tested those episodes, we didn't, kids weren't really understanding kind behaviors. And we realized that we, we had such a broad, sweeping coverage of kindness. And what we've learned is that you really have to hone in and be very explicit. Mm -hmm. So when we created Bee's Block, which is another show that we created and focused on, on kindness, um, we made that very clear and, and explicit. So that's an example of, yeah, we produced a whole season and we didn't move the needle, unlike playful um, uh, problem solving where we did move the needle. But I want to give an example of, um, this comes up a lot when, when people talk about Sesame. We did a divorce episode, and that's locked away. It's, it's not, never, it was never shown. But they did all the right things. They followed the model. Snuffy and Alice's parents were getting a divorce. They brought in all the experts. We had all, we had all the experts. Um, but they didn't do the formative research before they went into the studio. They filmed it. 
Then they realized, well, maybe we should do a test audience to see how kids react. And they did not react well because kids went home and said, are you getting a divorce? <laughs> so it never, never aired. And that's when we realized that there are some stories that we could tell on mass media, you could tell on television, but there are some stories that cannot be shown unless there's a parent watching. And all of that content is on our Sesame Workshop um, website. And I just want all of you working on joy and belonging and diversity. There's a lot of resources on sesameworkshop.com. It's all free. Please use it. And uh, we're, we're here to help in any way we can. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, are we, I want to check in on time. Lisa, shoot, one more question. OK, so this, oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Sorry. This um, model that we've been talking about, Rosemary, is, is, has been so productive, so generative, and you've used it over time to address the challenges, not only of childhood, you know, that, are, that always exist, but the challenges kind of of the moment, of the era that we're in. And I wonder if, for our last question, you could just talk a bit about what, the, what are the challenges that you see emerging or present now that Sesame Workshop can help kids address? We're currently focused on mental health, and we talked about that um, this morning. And what we're doing on Sesame is to help build children's emotional literacy. Children have big feelings. We all have big feelings, but we don't have the words to describe what we're feeling. That's step one. Step two is we have to give children a toolbox of strategies. There's no one size fits all. A toolbox of strategies to help us be with these feelings. These feelings don't go away right away. And it's OK to have these big feelings. But it's not OK if these big feelings stand in the way of you learning or doing the things that you love and bring joy. So we're trying to model through our content uh, and this is also on, on the website, uh, what these strategies are, because parents need these strategies. They're looking at us. The children are looking at us. They're seeing what we do when we make a mistake. So in my parenting book, I give an example of me messing up as a parent. When I went to Lucas's kindergarten, he's, 20, he's going to be 21 soon, first parent-teacher conference, and the teacher said to me, do you spill milk at home? And I'm like, no, why would I spill milk at home? I thought so. I was like, wait a minute, you're judging me now. <laughs> like, 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 that is not, that's not fair. And then she says, because I see Lucas not willing to make mistakes. So he needs to watch you make a mistake and see how you react. And that's all of us with big feelings. How do we manage our big feelings? And so we're, we're modeling these, these strategies. I love that. Thank you. Let's have a round of applause for Rosemary and her work at Sesame Workshop. <laughs>